Okay, so first let's talk about surface properties. Okay, and let's start with the term adhesion and bonding. So adhesion and the term cohesion. Okay, so adhesion means when two mo molecules of the same type, sorry, of different types, create a bond together. Okay, when it's two molecules of the same type, we call that cohesion. Pretty simple, right? So same, two of the same, called cohesion. Two that are different, it's called adhesion. So for example, if we have a surface, the green surface and the other green surface, and in the middle we have an adhesive that's bonding everything together, this surface with this surface here, right? The forces between the yellow are cohesive, right? And the, between the yellow and the green are adhesive. Okay, so we need a good cohesive between the yellow particles to act as a good adhe ad adhesion, right? So adhesion forces and the cohesive forces. So this is how it works when you're bonding something, when you're, um, this could be a bracket and a tooth, this could be anything you're adhering, a, a glass slab, a glass slab, and some water in between, right? If you put a, two glass slabs and a drop of water, you'll find that there's some adhesion between them, okay? <clears throat> so cohesion and adhesion. And this will be called, at the end, an adhesive joint, okay? So it's a layer of intermediate or adhesive with two surfaces, the adherents, and they're all adhered together. So Pitt and Fisher sealant is an example. Pretty much anything that we're adhering to the tooth is an example of adhesion. So our thing is, how do we know how, how, what, how good is our adhesion? Right, so the adhesion could be, what's the potential? Is it good adhesion or bad adhesion? Poor adhesion? Or, or strong adhesion. And the thing that determines if the adhesion is good is how, how much wettability do I have? So wetting. So now we get to something called wetting. So the adhesion relies on something called wetting. What's wetting? So wetting is this drop that I placed on the surface, how far is it gonna spread over the surface? That's called wetting. So if I have good wetting, I'll have good adhesion. If I have good wetting, I'll have good adhesion. Okay, so <clears throat> good wetting means that the drop, if I place it on the surface, it's going to spread over the surface more. Poor wetting, I put a drop on the surface, it stays intact. It doesn't spread over the surface easily, right? So it stays like this. That's called poor wetting. So here I'll get poor adhesion, right? And this will, will translate into contact angle. So if you hear that term, so a good wetting means low contact angle. The angle created between the drop and the surface is a low one. Here you have a high contact angle, poor wetting. Okay, so you're, which angle are you measuring? The one that's toward the drop. Okay, so I'm, I have a surface here. If the drop spreads, I'm measuring the angle that's toward the drop. Okay. So good wetting, spreading over the surface, will have a low contact angle, okay? All right, so now we know that to get good adhesion, we need good wetting, right? Good wetting means low contact angle under 90. Poor wetting means <coughs> poor, uh, high contact angle over 90. So what determines the wettability? So what helps determine how, how, when we have good wetting and when we have bad wetting. Okay, so the thing that helps to do that is something called surface energy in the solid and surface energy or surface tension in the liquid. Okay, so this means I have here, let's say a table, a surface, and I place the drop. Now the table has surface energy. It's attracting the drop towards it. And what it's trying to do is trying to break the drop so that it spreads over it. The liquid has something called surface tension. Sometimes they refer to it as surface energy, but surface tension more accurately is the forces keeping the drop intact. Okay, so the forces are keeping the drop intact. So for me to get good wetting, what do I want? I want high surface energy of the solid and low surface tension of the liquid so that this one will win over the forces of the drop and breaks it down. Okay, so it's favorable to have high surface energy 
of the solid, of the surface, and low surface tension of the liquid, and that, that will give me a good wettability, good wetting, and then good adhesion. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, so that way, the ability of an adhesive to wet the surface of the adherent is influenced by surface energy and surface tension. In general, the comparatively low surface energies of the liquids permit them to spread freely over high surface energy of solids. So for example, if I gave you these two, this table here, drop surface tension, uh, the surface tension of the liquid or the drop and surface energy of the surface. For example, where would you have a high contact angle? Right, if I give you this corner is A, B, C, D. Where would you have a high contact angle? A, right? So high contact angle, you want a high surface, maybe you didn't get the arrows, I get it, but you have a high surface tension, low surface energy, that means the drop will remain intact, which means poor wettability and high contact angle, okay? And the more you get, you, if the surface energy is high and the surface tension of the liquid is low, you'll get the opposite, okay? <clears throat> so you could say at the end, this is the summary, low surface tension of the liquid, high surface energy of the solid will give you good wetting with a low contact angle and eventually good adhesion, okay? And the other side is the opposite. Right? Now, sometimes you might hear things like hydrophilic or you read stuff like hydro. Usually a good contact or a low contact angle with good wettability is referred to sometimes as hydrophilic. And a poor contact angle or a high contact angle is, ref is referred to as hydrophobic surface. But that could change. It depends on what the drop is. If the drop is water, right, and the surface is hydrophilic, then you'll get usually this angle. Does that make sense? So that's why if we're talking, if this drop here that we're talking about is water, we're testing a drop of water, so we will refer to the surface as hydrophilic when there's good wettability because it likes the water. And we'll refer to it as hydrophobic when there's no good, when there isn't a good contact angle. However, that could change. So if, if we're using a drop of oil, if we're, using, if we're using a drop of oil, the surface has to be hydrophobic to get a good adhesion, right? So that's what happens in dentin. Because in dentin, the drop that we're using, like the bond, is a hydrophilic, sorry, hydrophobic, okay? The, drop, the bond drop is hydrophobic. We'll take that more in, etch, in etching and restorative. And here we could, we'll mention it a bit here. So for example, enamel adhesion, when we acid etch the enamel, we're gonna create little micro tags, right? We're creating little micro tags. So we're increasing the surface energy because instead of having a surface like this that's, that has forces trying to pull the drop towards it, we have a surface like this, right? And that's gonna expose more particles, more particles to attract the drop. So you're gonna increase the surface energy by etching the enamel. When you etch dentin, however, you'll decrease the surface energy. When you etch dentin, you decrease the surface energy because when you etch dentin, you, you remove the mineralized areas and you keep the collagen. And collagen is hydrophilic, it likes water. So when you try to place a bond on it, it's not, you're not gonna get good wettability and that's why you need a primer. That's why in dentin bonding we use primer and a bonding agent. And usually they come together in one package, but that's why they use a, a primer, because the primer has two ends. One that likes water, hydrophilic, that connects to the collagen, and one that's hydrophobic, that'll connect to the bond. And we'll take this more detail in, in acid and etch and restorative.